Welcome everyone to this week's episode of In the Know with Cat Bobino. Today my extra special guest is Dr. Rudy L. Horn, who is a mathematician, right? At, yes. At Morehouse, Morehouse. Morehouse College. I'm an associate professor in the math department. Okay, That's so great. why don't you tell us about that? How did you get to Morehouse? <laughs> uh, so I um so I'm I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, and uh so I Ended up at, uh, of all places, the University of Oklahoma as an undergraduate. Oh, wow. That's another, <laughs> that's another story. Okay. All right. And uh, so I was majoring in engineering. I started off in engineering physics, but I realized quickly I hated engineering. <laughs> so I, uh, but I liked physics, so I stuck with that. And then I was like, well, I love Ooh. math too, so what will it take to double major? Turned right. out there wasn't too much difference in the amount of courses I had to take, so... So I double majored in physics and math, and after I graduated from uh, the University of Oklahoma, I went to the University of Colorado in Boulder, and I got my PhD in uh, applied mathematics there. Then I, uh, so yeah, that's how I got to Morehouse. It's, it's kind of a story. That's okay. You can go ahead uh, with the story. So after that, then I graduated, and I actually came to California. I taught at Cal State Hayward, I guess now called Cal State East Bay. I taught there for a year. So, but I decided um, that I wanted to go back and do what's called a postdoc. I wanted to do more research. So then I ended up getting a position at the University of North Carolina, excuse me, in Chapel Hill. So I lived there for three years. Then I, I worked there. Then from there, I got a position at Florida State. I was there for five years, and I left Florida State. Then I went to Morehouse. That was hard to believe. That was seven years ago now. I was just, I think, going on year eight there. Uh, and so I've been at Morehouse since 2010, August 2010. Wow. So, yeah. I know one of the questions that I would definitely get about this interview is research in math. Yes. So what type of research does someone do in the mathematical department? Okay. So it so it depends. I mean, mathematics is pretty broad. Mm -hmm. So I I have my training in applied math and so my interests are like physics related problems. But also these days what's really I think popular and sort of trendy are biostatistics, data science, mm -hmm. operations research, all all those things fall within the spectrum of statistics, that's math too, even though yeah. some people say not, but <laughs> it's more, math. mathemat right, more it's mathematics math. you learn, um, you know, that helps in statistics. And so I work primarily on problems in what are called, I model, basically I model signal propagation in optical fibers and, and, and optical devices. And so there's a lot of new, so there's a lot of really innovative things going on in optics these days. And so I'm fortunate enough there's a lot of mathematical models that describe how light interacts with certain, certain devices. And so I, one of the things I do is analyze these models. But, so I do what's known as more applied math. But now if you want, there are also people who study more abstract things. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Right. The job market probably isn't <laughs> so, so vast, uh, so vast for that. For that mm -hmm. But but if you want to study structure, whether it's being, you know, there are things called groups, whether you want to study uh, Riemann hypothesis or any number or topology or there are a number of topics that you can do. Uh, and in fact, actually, a lot of these topics actually have an applied bent too. So, okay. uh, but the field the field is pretty broad. And you wouldn't think so because most people think of math. I think they think of numbers and the like. But right. there is a field called number theory that's actually fairly broad and fairly vast that talks about numbers. Yeah, I think that's one of the things, or the misconception, I guess, should say, when it comes to math, is that it's just the one plus two or you start adding some letters and then it becomes algebra. Yes. But you know, there's way more things that you can do in a mathematical degree, right? right? Yes. Besides just doing the quote unquote additions or superficial math we see in high school. I, I agree with that. There's right. a lot, 
there's a lot of other things you can do. And uh, so whether you want to talk about, you know, modeling, you know, air, you know, a wing on a plane, how it's or designed for a wing of a plane, whether it's through wind tunnel or mathematics is required for that. Right. But mathematics is also required for analyzing data on Wall Street. Right. And they're saying, so the training you get in math, or for that matter, physics, chemistry, biology, You're gonna the, STEM, math. the STEM fields that even if you do, even if you do some calculus, some, actually I would argue even more statistics, mm -hmm. if you've learned some basic stats, you can get pretty far. And these days... A lot of people are trying to learn like data science and mm -hmm. then there's programs. And I think the Bay Area is, I think, a pioneer in this. Right, right, right. Where, you know, you can go and take these sort of like, boot camps right. for learning about data science. So, so they'll catch up on a bit of programming, a bit of math. And, of course, I didn't mention programming, but these days <laughs> everybody has to pro You have to learn some programming. I mean, I'm, you don't have to be a genius at programming. I'm certainly not. I am anti-programming. But you, but if I you want, but if you want to work, it, but, but if you want to work out in the world, yes. that's what you're gonna get paid to do. You're I gonna know. basically be, you're gonna be applying mathematical skill, your mathematical skill set, to solve a particular problem, right? Whether that's modeling, you know, what type of clothes go into wi on which shelf, or the number of people, number of customers arriving in a store and leaving, and analyzing right. data but if you're just analyzing data a lot of times you're gonna have to write basic some, i say quote unquote basic program not so basic but learning some some programming mm -hmm. some and you don't have to like i said you don't have to be a c plus plus master yeah. but these days at least you know there's you have to know like java python yeah uh we teach like we'll teach matlab a lot of times which is sort of a so these are sort of where these higher level program programming languages where you're not like so in C, for example, you want to define an array. If you want to define multiplication, you have to write programs to do that. Well, there are a lot of programs that that stuff's already built in. Mm -hmm. And of course, C is pretty good at that now, too. But but in those higher level sort of constructs, you don't need to learn. You need to you, you can learn enough to. Do what you have to do. I know. And, and, and one day, yourself. I mean, like, my background is biology. So, you know, I'd rather be out in the field chasing something wild than be on a computer putting a program in. But even with uh, wildlife biology, you have to take the information you get in the field, put right, it into have, the computer. You got to do statistics. You have, you have to analyze it. the you information you got. Right, right. And I'd much rather give it it's to fun to, It's fun to collect it. <laughs> it's fun to collect it, but right. somebody's got to analyze it. I know. I know. The reason you're out there in the first place is so you can analyze the said I data. know. I know. At least. I, I try. For the I research try. scientists. <laughs> but I think that a lot of times, because um, I, when I talk to students and things like that, they're so anti-math. And yeah. I really don't understand why, you know, but... Well, I can, unfortunately, I think, um, so I'm a big believer that one of the biggest things is basically eighth grade algebra, okay. <laughs> ninth grade algebra sort of dictates in a large part how people feel about math, feel or will go. Mm -hmm. And so the problem is that you get, I think, like even with men and women and even probably regardless of race in, in large part, um, Kids are fairly equal and fairly, but somewhere along the way, probably usually like I think middle school or high school, math is already kind of hard. But if you encounter even one difficult teacher or one teacher you don't like, and that's enough to push most people <laughs> far away from it. Because yeah. some people are already like, well, I'm never, never I'm gonna never going to use it. math. Well, right. I still remember, uh, <laughs> still remember I, I'm a Law and Order fan. And uh, so I remember an episode of Law and Order where two detectives are talking, and <laughs> in the one scene, is, so this crane. So in the episode, basically, this crane falls, and they have to investigate what happened to the crane, and you know, yeah. people are killed, so so on. So the cops are talking amongst themselves, and uh, the one cop said, "Oh, forensic accounting." He's like, "I told my teachers I would never use math." And then the other professor, and then the other detective says. Yeah, I told my biology teacher I'd never use biology, and I spend half my life, half my time looking at autopsy photos. Right. 
Right. Yeah, that's that's so it turned out I actually really need both of them really needed to learn. That's the key, you know. The thing is, like so many people or not so many people, but so many students I meet are so anti math and I'm just like, You're gonna need math your whole life. Even if it's just investing your money and you want to create a platform that way. You wanna have money. But I will but I will admit that we also math educators to some extent too are partly to blame. They don't do we don't always do the best job at promoting teaching. math yeah. and teach well, not just teaching it, but even just promoting its uses and stuff. I think, you know, people I was talking to some friends the other day and, you know, people are very proud to say, Hey, I you know, I don't know any math. <laughs> but you would not but you would not say, Man, I don't know how to read. You would feel right. completely ashamed of that. I, I promise I don't know. you. I don't know. Because okay. there are so I many, think most people, there's a lot of adults that I've met that generously will tell me that they don't like to read. Not that they can't read. No, no. But I'm saying if you couldn't read. I'm, you I'm are, not that's saying. True. That's true. No, no, I'm not saying that you don't. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I want to distinguish between your liking to read books versus, that's true. versus just simply saying, I like people brag about, oh, I cannot do math. But people would not brag and say, oh, I cannot read. Right. Now, whether or not you choose to read, that's a different issue than if I can read or can or cannot read. Right. So, I get that. I that's, mean, that's, what I, that's what I meant. I get yeah. that. And so um, one of the biggest things you've done with math, right? Yeah. Is you were a consultant on the movie Hidden Figures. Yes, I was. So how did that come about? How did you get that consulting <laughs> job? So I, you know, so as I said, I am a professor at Morehouse College and I'm in the math department there and they were, sh- and the film was, the majority of the film was shot in Atlanta or in the Atlanta area or Georgia, in different parts of Georgia. And so uh, uh, the production designer for the film, when Thomas actually called the math department at Morehouse, because Morehouse ends up being one of the locations that's used, or one of the places they film uh, Hidden Figures, and in fact, Hmm. the scenes that are supposed to be NASA is actually Morehouse College. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, so anyhow, uh, the production designer, Wynn Thomas, contacted the math department, uh, and uh, my chair, a guy named Dr. Dwayne Cooper, suggested me for the job. Okay. And then he called me, contacted me, and eventually I accepted the job. And at eventually. first I wasn't, well, I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure whether or not I would be able to be, because I told him I couldn't be on set all the time. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, I had a day job. I, I was, because right. they were filming from mid-March to mid-May, but that's right in, that's, yeah. I'm teaching. Right. right. So I, and, you know, so I, I was teaching three classes, so I can't. I can't just not teach. Right. I can't just skip days. Yeah, you can't just let the students just not take right. their classes. That doesn't you know, work that way. Graduate, so, right. so we, but we were able to work out a schedule, and they, you know, so and they were they were all they were actually really accommodating, okay. considering. And it turned out that luckily for me, like one of the scene, one of the big places, to Roger P. Henson's character who plays Katherine Johnson in the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the space physics group that she works for, but that set, they actually were building from basically February all the way through late April, uh, early May. So a lot of the math scenes were there, and there was those math scenes when the young Catherine died at the beginning. So a lot of my work was kind of at the beginning of shooting and at the end, and at the end of shooting. So that made it kind of nice. And then I could, and then there were a few other times I had to be on set for other thing, other scenes, but. They were able to accommodate my schedule, and to my surprise, and it worked out. That's really good. So, did you work mostly with Taraji P. Henson since her character was the mathematician? Yeah, I, I met. I had to. I had to. I met them all though. So, yeah, I met Taraji P. Henson. I met Janelle Monae, Octavia Spencer, Kevin Costner, Jim Parsons, the Kirsten whole, Dunst. Everybody. I had to. I had to meet. So the the main stars in the movie I met, and I met some of the. Minor stuff, but a lot of, but uh, probably a lot of the scenes when they're dealing with like their families or relationships. Mm-hmm. I wasn't on set, so a lot of those, a lot of those actors and actresses, uh, like the, uh, like the, the husband, right? like the husband who was in Moon or in Moon, Moonlight, Moonlight, right? Mahesh, I forget. 
I forget the actress. I think he's name. from out here too. And I think right. Yeah, I think he's, he's from, from out Oakland. here. Yeah. I think he's yeah. I think he's yeah. I think he's from the Bay Area. Right. And, uh, but I can't. I, I'm spacing his name. Yes, but, I cannot. But like him, for example, <laughs> I didn't meet because he probably came in, flew into Georgia, filmed his scenes, and left. Yeah. Yeah. And those and since they didn't need math on those days, those were days I I wasn't on set. Right. But so. I mean it seems like it was a cool experience, right? Oh, it was a it was a it was a really cool experience. I was I was surprised how cool it was. It was <laughs> some of the some of the cool things though, I won't lie. Uh, food yeah. is really good on a set. The and craft Holly, service. And, uh, craft services were good. <laughs> and Holly they have money, so Hollywood, I'm I'm an academic. I'm, we have some money, but we don't have money like Hollywood. And so I the craft that. services, I mean, especially if you had to be, when that days I had to be there, like, say, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., they have a, the craft service have a guy there, you know, fixings, and then there's like, well, do you want eggs, egg whites, whatever Same. type of omelet you want, we can make it for you. Oh, juices, they have like 30 types of juice. <laughs> No, papaya, they don't have just orange juice and grape juice. They have papaya juice. They have, you know, because people want that stuff. And so, but yeah, that was, so that was pretty nice. And since I, they, um, to make life easier for me, basically, they decided, since I was the on-set mathemat- consulting mathematician, they just made me a member of the crew. So then that way I had the crew badge and I had access to everything. So I could actually, even on days, because a couple, a few times I did, like an interview, like I'm doing with you. Right. I did a few of those for Fox. Mm-hmm. And so I would come to the set on days that, say, there wasn't any math, but I was and on there doing... Your interviews. But I would do an like interview that. and then leave. And so, but since I was a member of the crew, I could show up anytime. Oh, and man. have, and, and have access to, I could have, in theory, eaten breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, Every that's day. The, that's the weight of my soul is food. Like yeah. you, you know, you gonna tell me there's some good food. I will. That's some really good. I food. will be there. You know, I've had. <laughs> like I. Um, One night we had steak and lobster. Okay, I, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I feel like you're trying to make me jealous. Sorry. And it's working. I'm, I'm not trying. I'm just saying. Like, I had a, like, one-eighth experience of that. Like, I did a show called Genius with Stephen Hawking. It was oh, on PBS. Oh, okay. Wow. And um, so, but we were shooting out in the field. Do, so, we were in so Nevada. Did you, did you meet him? Stephen no. Oh, he okay. doesn't leave Europe, apparently. Right, yeah. So, we were filming in Nevada. Oh. And um, there's a whole crew. And, you know, you get up early. And we were all in front of the camera. But... They had hired some people, I guess they found online for food. They had, it was just bad. It was so bad. Yeah, like, nah. they left, like, the food out, and it had started getting rancid. And, and they ended up firing the people and then spending, Bringing. and then um, they just took us out to eat every day. Oh. Which was fine. Which was fine. Which was fine. Right. Yeah, it was okay. But it wasn't craft services. No, the craft services. And, it, <laughs> and in fact, <laughs> that. to make you jealous of more, the cra- that craft service, the last week um, of filming, they were gone. And so people we were, we were like, well, where did the craft service guys go? Right. Oh, well, it turned out they had started filming Fast and Furious, the last one. And that craft services were, they, they had already committed to them. So, oh so, they went, so they went over to Fast and Furious. And we were, this was the last week of filming for Hidden Figures. So this was like May 2016. Mm-hmm. So it was just funny, though. But I was like, yeah, I figured they, they were in demand. They must be in demand. So, so like... That's an interesting topic. I mean, interesting story, not on topic, is that I've never seen Fast and Furious movie, any of them, really? until I was flying back from Chicago on Sunday, and uh, I watched the seventh one. Zan, I haven't seen. I, that's the only one I haven't seen, actually. That's, and I, I don't even I see the beginning. I have seen the last one. So I don't, I don't even know no nothing about and it. I was, I was going to go see a little story with <laughs> that. I was going to, a few in Atlanta, uh, just maybe a few months ago, I talked to a friend at one of my local establishments I hang out at, and they were saying, I was saying, well, I think I'm going to go to a movie. And I was like, I'm going to go see Fast and Furious. And he was like, eh. he's like, well, why don't you go see Get Out? Good movie. And, right. Good and, movie. Right. So <laughs> I said, well, I'm, I'm really not in the horror. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, he's like, 
They pitch it as initially as a horror film, but it's not a horror film. See, that's me. I do not Because I was like, I don't like horror. Right? I was like, I do right? yeah. I was like eh, no, I, I, I'm traumatized by exorcism as a child. <laughs> so, no, I'm not interested. So, uh, but he was like, so instead of going to see Fat, the latest Fast and Furious, I went and saw Get Out, Get Out which, which was a great movie. So I, yeah. and then I just never got back. I've been traveling, so I never got back to see Fast and Furious, but I guess I'll catch it on Netflix or something. Actually. I'm not even going to talk about it because of my feelings with that movie. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I think I had said it to a few people. I put it on Facebook and they was like, no, greatest show. These movies are awesome. And I was like, all right. Right. I mean, if that's you're how you enti- feel. You're entitled to your opinion. Right. That's what and you're I mean, saying, if right? that's how you feel. And walk away from it. Right. So um, one of the things I also like to talk about on the show is I want to show people the whole person that's in STEM. Okay. So what do you like to do for fun outside of work, outside of math? What do you do? <laughs> okay. Well, there is a part of me that, you know, I still love math. I'll read math books or bios <laughs> even sometimes. Uh, you know, you know, things that are your passion you tend to want to do. Right. Whether, but uh, other things I like, I, I'm a comic book collector. So I'm okay. big. So, I, so, you know, Marvel will be getting my money for the next... You know, oh, ten years, and, yeah, or so, ten years, and I just watched the trailer for Defenders today. It looks great <laughs> on Netflix. So I, then the trailer for Black Panther looks awesome. So, yes, <laughs> yes. So I'm, I'm looking forward. That's coming out. It looks like February 2018. Mm-hmm. So. I'm excited. So, so, so you're I, more of a Marvel a, fan than a DC. Uh, no, that's oh. not true. Okay. I collect okay. the comic books. I collect. In fact, I actually. One of the reasons I was in Hayward, I was visiting a good friend of mine, old friend from my from Chicago, who lives out here. And in fact, he had kept a bunch of my comic books in storage out here for the last 10, 15 years. So I finally sifted through all of them, and I picked out the couple of hundred I'm going to probably bring I'm bring back with me to Atlanta, and I gave away all the others, which at and first they weren't worth any money. Well, no, no, I, no, no. Here, here, okay. So his. Okay. So okay. my friend, the the family I was staying with, they have three kids. So they have two boys, girls. So they were picking through. So I left. I probably left at least six hundred comic books. That basically I'm like, I threw away, at least. And so. Yeah, you was they a true. Pick, so they pick. So they picked through them. So there was an Iron Man that one of the, the son picked. One of his sons picked out. So he goes on, he decides to just go on eBay and look it up, right? And this is the one I threw away. So the ad in the back, the ad, just the ad, if you cut out the ad in the back, it was meant you could sell that for $4. Now I bought the comic book for like 50 cents, maybe back when, or dollar. So the ad was worth $4. And then it turned out, when they looked up the comic book itself, it was actually worth 8 bucks. And I was like, Okay, that's one. And then they looked up others, and they, of course, now, now we're in the eBay land. So now they was, we yeah. started looking up all these. And then, of course, I look up some of the ones I kept, and I was just like, yeah, uh, the 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 $75 fee to pay Southwest is well worth it. For, wow. That's- compared to what the, <laughs> the actual worth of the comics in there, so. No, but could you even imagine the 600 comic books that you left? Yeah, I left. Times $8 a pop. Yeah, I don't even want to. I I I just said I just washed my hands of it. <laughs> That's easier than thinking about the eight dollars a comic book. Some luckily, some of them probably were worth a little less. Some of them, but I figure on even if they were even worth a dollar on average, I'd still be making probably making out like a bandit. So, but yeah, so I but I I did some of the comic books I collected because I just the stories that I most enjoyed I collect those. So yeah. so I do that. I try to I try to exercise. I'm not always the best at that. I used to weightlift a lot in graduate school. I was I weightlifted. That was a way to relieve stress, and I strongly encourage people to do weightlifting to find something. It doesn't have to be weightlifting, but even running, walking, something. And especially in our age of being on our phones and yes. our tablets, yes. you need you need physical act. Physical activity still is required for the human body. Right. So after you watch this, 
you can go out. And exactly. Go, go out and even take a walk. Or even right. watch this while you're taking a walk. There's nothing wrong with that either. Yeah. Except for the people who almost run into me. Like, a boy that's almost true. ran into me today. That's walking. true. That is true. Yeah, there's the yeah, downside of that. That's the gray area. So let's see. What else? Um, I like traveling. So luckily my job affords me to be able to travel a bit. I mean, so I can get in. So I mean... I mean, I went to a conference in Seattle. I was in Seattle before I came here to Oakland. And uh, so it was nice, you know, I always enjoy visiting Seattle. But, you know, I was there for a conference. Part of it was actually work. Right. Uh, actually, a fair amount of it was work. But uh, but I still was able to get out some time to hang out with people and hang out with friends. And so I enjoy that. Um, I don't really, I don't really play any instruments. Okay. I wish I Wish I'd learned how to play piano, but and it's never too late. But and I watch, you know, like I said, I watch you know, Marvel. I, I and you ask, I'm a DC fan too. But I've just been like the Batman's with Christian Bale were awesome. Dark Knight, I like those. And I even liked Superman. Superman versus Batman. It was a little. Eh. I didn't like it. I'm not gonna lie, I just didn't like it. That's fair enough. I I, I, didn't like it. I mean, you know, I yeah, no. I don't like I mean I remember someone I remember someone telling me they fell asleep during it and that's and never that's very good. Possible. That's, that's never possible. good if you're you know, if you're supposed to be a action <laughs> movie and yeah. people fall asleep. Yeah. That's you know yeah. that's probably not good. Like yeah. falling asleep in a horror film, probably not good. Yeah. It's probably not doing its job. Uh, exactly. So, exactly. But we'll see. But Wonder Woman was really good. So I Very thought. Very good. So I thought Wonder Woman actually helped put DC a little bit back on track. But we'll see. We'll see about Aquaman. We'll, we'll see, see about and we'll see about Justice League. Yeah. I'm not. And I feel like Wonder Woman's kind of carrying them at this point. Exactly. No, no, no. I. Because I uh, agree with you 100 percent on that. Ben Wonder, Wonder, as Wonder Batman. Woman. Wonder Woman is complete. Yeah, I'm totally with you. <laughs> well, but I heard supposedly they offered Christian Bale a fair amount of money. To try to come back. That, that's what I heard, but he he just refused. He just said, "I'm not gonna do Batman anymore." I mean, I which would have been awesome if they had Christian Bale. I think. Yeah. Just because at least there would have been a continuity, yeah. you know, sent, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I just. The, <laughs> but I understand. I just like Batman versus Superman. The whole workout montage with Ben Affleck. Like, why? And then the whole why? well, and then they did, and then they blended. So one of the things, and I and I've read the comics. So I, and I've actually, in fact, I one of the comic books I'm bringing that is in my stack that I kept was the Frank Miller, you know, Superman versus Batman, like kind of these alternate, yeah, reality ones. And they had these like there's a dream sequence where Batman's dreaming that you know super, you know, that he wins, that Superman wins, he conquered the world, right? And he takes his mask off, then he burns him, and you know, uses X-ray bits, burn, you know, kills him, and kills his kills all his people and that I, I'm sitting there going well, I think that's from that's from Frank Miller but they're kind of combining that with other things and but I'm like that's really confused like as a comic book guy I know that but the vast majority of people will be like yeah, this what? dream sequence is stupid yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. and I was and if I felt that way and I read the comic books I'm willing to give you more of a break I couldn't envision someone who didn't read them. Which is me. I didn't read them. Right, I who was saying? Them. Who's saying? Why? Why do they have this? I don't I understand. Don't I mean, I don't think too many comic book people. I don't know who's gonna watch this episode. I just can't fathom a world where Batman will win over Superman, gadgets over an alien. But anyway, anyway. Um, we're pretty much out of time. So. You know, as always, if you're interested in speaking to one of my guests, please send me a message first, and then I can transfer that message over to them. I wanted to say thank you so much for coming in and doing the show with me today. I'm sure we'll keep in touch after this. All right. And to my audience, I will see you next week. Take care.